Hi folks, this is Scott from Off Grid with Whiskey and Sunshine. Got another chainsaw video for you because I know you folks love your chainsaws. Today we're going to be doing a tailgate review on this little MS-180. Oh. I said I was never going to do it, but I did. I went out and I bought a homeowner's chainsaw. You're probably thinking, yeah, you got a good deal on it because you got a YouTube channel and you just wanted something to review. Not the case, not the case. I actually bought this chainsaw because I saw how useful my wife's little GTA 26 battery operated saw was. That's the little handheld jobby, one hand. And we do a lot of stuff around here with cutting trees on the edge of the property. Sometimes it's small stuff. We're always cutting trees that are in the trail or in the road. I also wanted something for a cheap light saw. So I bought it with all that stuff in mind, thinking I was basically buying a cheap piece of junk. And I've actually been very pleasantly surprised. For a homeowner's saw, I've actually found this thing to be very, very handy. Very handy. It's very light, very easy to manage, very easy to start. Uh, they only cost around a couple hundred bucks. There's also, a, I believe it's an MS-170 or a 175. It's just, this is just a tiny bit bigger and it holds a little more fuel and oil. That was why I went with the 180. Could have had either one. So basically what we're talking about here is a 33 to 35 cc gas powered chainsaw, 16 inch bar. It is uh, an M-tronic saw, which means basically the carburetor and the ignition adjust themselves for you. I wasn't sure which way it was till just now I look because I haven't had to mess with it. The thing is actually, it's, uh, it's been a really good saw. It starts good, whether it's hot or cold. And uh, I bought the one that's the simplest model. It's got the two bar knots. They do make one that's toolless. And the toolless model has a big, a big uh, round thing you turn to tighten it. So you flip it out, you turn it, and that loosens it up. You pull your bar out where you want it. You tighten it back up. You don't need a tool. I just as soon use the wrench. And then they also have a version that has a different starter. The starter sticks out a little further. And I, I'm not sure. That might be a C or a CM. Uh, I'll have to look up what the exact model is. But the one with the other starter on it, you don't crank like you do this one. Well, this saw, you, you crank it and it, it turns over. The other one, you, you pull it and the cord comes out easy and it winds up a spring. And you pull it all the way out once, you let it go back in, you pull it out again. Somewhere around the third time, when you're pulling it all, all the way out, it gets to a point where the spring is wound all the way, then it releases and it cranks the saw for you. So you're not pulling your arm off. But I opted out of that too. But I mean, for a homeowner's saw or somebody older or somebody with bad shoulders or something, might be something you want to think about. It's an option. You know, and maybe you don't want to carry around a chainsaw wrench or a scrunch is what they call it. Maybe you don't want to carry one around and you want to do the toolless thing. That's an option too. They have that. And they're not much more money. Um, the downside to this, it only takes this small safety chain. It's very small, light duty stuff. But you know, considering what you're cutting, most of the time I'm cutting brush with this and it's up off the ground and it's clean stuff. So the saw doesn't see a lot of dirt. So really it stays pretty sharp for quite a while. You can still sharpen them. I think it's a, I think it's a four millimeter file that it takes to sharpen these. And you sharpen them just like you would any normal chainsaw. It's a fairly simple process. They also make a three in one sharpener. I don't know if they make one that goes down this size. You'll notice that the bar on this size, on this size saw is substantially narrower and they've made the tip a lot smaller. I think the reason they did that was because they've, they've shortened this radius where the danger zone is to prevent kickbacks because you never want to put your bar into anything in this front quarter, this little 90 degree angle right here. If you touch anything with that chain spinning, that makes the saw kick. So by making this smaller, they have less of the chance in doing that. Uh, really a good saw, a little saw. I, I really can't complain. It's got a 
It's got an honest to goodness. I don't have the tool with me to take it off and show you right now. It's got an honest to goodness real air cleaner. It's easy to service, so that's good. Uh, another thing I like about it is it's got these little windows so you can see how much fuel and how much oil is in the reservoirs. Uh, really very simple little tool. You know, if, if, if you're gonna cut firewood for your home and you're gonna burn five, six, 10, 12 cord of wood in a year, this saw is probably not for you. You probably ought to think about getting something bigger. Matter of fact, I would say if you are cutting anything to heat your home with at all, you're probably gonna want something bigger, unless you're just using that wood heat as a novelty, like for a fireplace, something like that. So you're not gonna use that much wood anyway. Uh, but for general purposes around the house, cutting up trees that have fallen down, as long as they're not too big, uh, cutting limbs off, you know, doing all the things that you'd think of normally a homeowner doing with a chainsaw, you can't go wrong for, I, I think I paid under $200 for this, but I've had it almost a year now. So probably the prices have changed. Of course, inflation's gone crazy lately anyway. So I'm not exactly sure on the price, but you're basically talking about a, around a three horsepower chainsaw, I believe. I'd have to look that up to be sure. And I think it's either 33 or 35 cc's. The uh, oiler for the chain is not adjustable. It's basically set at one speed and that's how fast the oil comes out. All I care about is it's enough and it gets enough oil. So I haven't had any problem with that. It doesn't have the, uh, the replaceable bucking spikes or felling spikes or whatever you want to call them. I just cut these ones that are made onto the case. Acceptable, they work. You're not, the saw isn't that big so you're gonna to have to rely on bucking spikes. I mean, it, it, the saw for its intended purpose is a wonderful little tool. It really is. I wanted to buy the MS250, but evidently that saw is being discontinued. And right now you can still buy one, but they're quite expensive. They're half again as much as what this cost. I wanted this over $300 to buy a 250. This one was around 200 bucks and they don't seem to have any time soon that they're thinking about phasing them out. So it's still a current saw. Whereas the MS250 is on its way out so you're probably only going to be able to buy new parts for it for a short time before you have to go aftermarket. But yeah, uh, good dependable little chainsaw. Good saw to throw in your toolbox on your truck. Uh, good saw to carry on the tractor. If something happens, you run over it. You're not out $1,000. You're only out $200. And it's going to, it's going to do about 90% of the jobs that you have around a homestead. Now, as I mentioned... You can't expect too much. If you're gonna start burning firewood, you wanna think about getting up into a, a 45 to a 50 cc, maybe even 55 cc chainsaw, something with a bigger chain on it, some more horsepower, it'll last you a lot longer. Whether that be a homeowner saw, farm and ranch saw is the next step up, then eventually you get into your 261 that is actually a two crew professional chainsaw. But hey folks, that 261, you're looking at almost $700. This is two. It's two. It's made by steel, and I'm telling you, it's still a good quality product. I wouldn't say that it was if it wasn't. I've used it quite a bit. I've yet to have any problems with it. I'm very satisfied. I really am. So as long as you're reasonable about your ex expectations and what you're going to do, I don't know. You might want to give it a try. The average homeowner probably doesn't need much more than this. If you're only going to use it once or twice a summer, you know, clean up storm damage on the lawn, stuff like that. Perfect saw, you know, and if it gets much worse than that and the stuff gets that much bigger, you may be in a position where you're going to be looking at hiring somebody to come clean it up anyway, and they'll be taking care of it. So it won't be that big of a deal. It is what it is. It's a good, small little saw. It does the job. Doesn't seem to burn a lot of gas. It's lightweight. It's easy on my back so I can carry it all through the woods cutting trails. I don't have to worry about carrying an extra 25 pound chainsaw, you know, where I want to go to just cut off a few little branches. This thing's more than adequate for that. And I might add, if it's your first chainsaw, there'd be one more reason to buy one of these. 
this would be a really good first chainsaw for somebody to buy and learn how to run one before they jumped right into a pro saw. So there's another reason that they're good to have around. I know I said I'd never buy one. Yeah, I'm eating crow. I've got one and I actually use it maybe more than I do my big saws just because it's convenient and it's easy. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, we've got all kinds more videos on chainsaws, Kubota tractor, uh, firewood, chickens, gardening, solar power, you name it. Stop by and see us at Off Grid with Whiskey and Sunshine.